What's up guys, this is Chris from D-Pad Dubs. Today we're talking about Reinhard Wilhelm, the 61-year-old German ambassador to main tanking. Never will you have more fun or less fun, depending on whether or not you know how to play him and play him well. But you're in luck because today I'm giving you five important points on how to do just that. Number one, aggression and push timing. Now, aggression needs to be met with a quick disclaimer about how to use your shield to maintain your push. You will hear this in a lot of other guides about Ryan, but shield management is a big deal, especially with the most recent nerf to Ryan's shield bringing it down to 1600 HP. There is never a time that you should be sitting out in the open or in a choke just holding your shield up. This is the most common mistake I see with beginner Reinhardts. If you or your team aren't ready to make your push, it is better to just stand behind cover and let your shield charge than have it soaking up needless damage. Your job as the main tank is to dictate the pace of the game and ensure that you are always in control. What that means is that with your shield, instead of sitting in one place, it needs to be utilized as a tool to get you and your team from point A to point B safely. Determine where those points are and make your move quickly. The longer your shield is up and soaking damage, the more dangerous your push becomes. A good example of this would be the first choke on attack on any checkpoint map. Think Hanamura, Temple of Anubis, etc. How many times have you been behind your Reinhardt, who is just stuck in the first choke, soaking up damage, and they aren't doing anything to move your team forward? This is actually the reason I first started playing Rhine. We needed a consistent main tank who could initiate a push for our team, opening up space for the DPS players to do their job. Another note on aggression is that you determine where your team is primarily grouped around, even during the team fight. The best note I can give you for controlling how far you should be pushing up is how much of an advantage at that time your team has. What I mean is how many players on your team are still alive versus how many players on the enemy team are still alive. Did you get an early pick? Push forward. Your responsibility is to shove that disadvantage down the enemy team's throat before their ally can return to the fight. On the other hand, if the other team has an advantage on you, know when to back out of the fight carefully, ensuring you're protecting your team. You have a massive shield. Make sure you're using it to stop damage from landing onto your team. The last note on this is that until you have at least 20 hours on Rhine, I recommend forgetting that your pin ability even exists. The pin is extremely tempting, but often lands beginner Reinhardts without a pick and way far out of position. Lastly is pathing. Too many main tanks take the commonly known path when pushing and even defending an objective. If the enemy is bunkered up on the high ground, consider taking a different path to escort your team to the enemy team's location. No one in the game is better than Reinhardt at closing space. If you have a path that can lead you to the enemy team safely, always take it, even if it isn't the commonly known push. Now before we move on to number two, if you die, you should consider the team fight over. Your team will lose. Stay alive, but also stay aggressive to take and make space for the other people on your team to make plays. All right, number two, when to play Ryan. Reinhardt, in my opinion, is the most fun main tank that exists in any game ever. His kit is an absolute blast, and if you're skilled with him, he becomes an instant carry hero. Though he's relatively versatile, there are actually plenty of instances in which you should not play him and instead opt for another character. First, let's talk about where he's the strongest. Reinhardt's shield is the widest in the game and also the most available for quick casting to save yourself and your team. His fire strike and pin abilities make him an absolute savage against anything on the ground level. The perfect map for Reinhardt is King's Row. You should borderline run him every time. This is because the majority of the map is condensed to small lanes that lack in high ground advantages. Your shield on this map can take up almost the entire lane during the second push. It's difficult for people to escape the range of your hammer, pin, and fire strikes. Use King's Row as a good idea for the perfect map for Ryan. Look for things like narrow lanes and lack of high ground for when to run him. Now let's talk about where Ryan is bad. Reinhardt is bad, very bad, in maps that have a lot of high ground. Unlike Orisa, Sigma, or Winston, your shield is incredibly limited against the high ground, and your damage potential is effectively reduced to zero. You need to close the gap between you and the enemy team at all times. Reinhardt has the most value when you are in the enemy team's face, and you're able to apply pressure. If you find yourself having trouble achieving this goal, you will probably be better off switching to another hero. Your ultimate is also effective on only one plane, whichever one you're on at that time. 
the more planes that are available, example, high ground, uh, middle ground, and low ground, take away that power of your ultimate to change the game. Though Reinhardt is a ton of fun to play, I tend to avoid him on maps that feature very wide lanes and have a lot of high ground. Quickly, we will discuss what comps you should and shouldn't play Reinhardt in. Reinhardt's strength grows further and further the more brawly the other team is playing. Is the other team running a Rhine, Zarya, and steamrolling? Perfect. Make the switch to Rhine yourself. Do they have a Brigette, Genji, Mercy, and Lucio? Great. All of those characters suffer at range and are great targets for your massive swinging hammer. Do not play Reinhardt against characters you can't brawl against. If the other team is running Dive, let's say Winston, Wrecking Ball, Widow, Tracer, Anna, and Baptiste, you're going to have a very hard time escorting your team and yourself to do any damage whatsoever. This isn't a hard and fast rule, especially depending on what map you're on. Remember this, actually for every character. Consider the value that you are getting from your character at that moment, and always be thinking about whether or not you should switch. Okay, number three, smart fire strikes. Fire striking is the fastest and most effective way to charge your ultimate quickly before the fight devolves into a hammer swinging match, especially because it ignores shields, Diva's shield matrix notwithstanding. Okay, the best time to initiate your fire strike is when you're behind cover. Fire strike has a significant cast time and can't be interrupted. Because of this, it leaves you and your team vulnerable for those valuable seconds of cast. Start your fire strike instead from behind a wall. Then when it's ready to go, you can peek from around your cover to land the shot. You should be using your fire strike as often as possible until you get your ult. The cooldown is only six seconds, so it's frequently available. The more often you use this, the faster your ultimate will charge. It's actually pretty amazing how many random picks I've been able to land by throwing fire strikes into the enemy team as well. Random side note, try to coordinate with your friendly Baptiste when he's ulting. Fire strike can actually one shot any 200 HP squishies through that wall of doom. Now, once your ult is charged, you should be wary of throwing your fire strike unless you really need to. At that point, you're no longer charging your ult. You're just throwing needless poke damage at the enemy team and helping the enemy supports charge their ultimates. Lastly, when the fight has devolved and you're right up on the enemy team swinging your hammer, you seldom need to fire strike. Your hammer does considerable damage, far more than the fire strike. The only time you should be using it is if you need to cancel the animation of your swing to deal some fast damage to finish off an enemy target. Number four, pinning like a grandmaster. Okay, remember that I said until you have 20 hours, and I mean it, 20 hours, you should forget that the button to cast your pin even exists. It lands you out of position and you will seldom get the pick that you were hoping for. Once you die, which you will die, the team fight is over and you've wasted a lot of your team's precious time. Now, for the people that are over 20 hours on Ryan, I think the best way to pin is to aim straight at a wall near the enemy team. Try to find somewhere that is relatively close to where you're currently standing so the enemy team has less time to react and possibly counter your play. Assess where you're going to land before you pin. That way, once your pin is complete and you have hit your stationary target, you will be right next to the enemy team and ready to do some damage with your hammer. The most difficult part of playing Reinhardt, even after his movement speed buff, is closing the gap between you and the enemy team. Communicate with your team to let them know that you will be pinning in so they can heal you and dish out the follow-up damage on the heavily distracted enemy team. Last note on pins, be sure to counter pin against the enemy Reinhardt when he's used his. Typically, he is zeroed in on one of your teammates for an easy pick, but you can save their life by executing your own pin against him, knocking him down, and extending the fight. Keep in mind, though, you have enough health at full HP to sustain a pin and live from the enemy Rhine. Sometimes, it's best to just take the pin, assuming your healers are alive and present, and allow the enemy Rhine to get easily wiped once he's pinned himself out of position. Number five, hammer down. You have one of the most game-changing ultimates in the game, period. What's funny about this ult is that unless you know how to use it and use it well, it's actually completely useless. Learning how to master Reinhardt's ult is essential to playing him well. The fastest way to charge your ult is to fire strike often and swing your hammer whenever you can without landing yourself out of position or feeding the enemy team. When you're up against a fellow Ryan on the enemy team, you need to be tracking his ultimate. You are the one responsible for this. You can 100% negate the enemy Ryan's most powerful ability, his ult, if you're tracking it and playing smart. I will often drop my shield for a while to try and bait the other Ryan's ultimate because I've been tracking it, making him think that I'm not paying attention, then quickly throw my shield back up as soon as I hear him cast it, saving my team and completely wasting his ult. 
Now, I love to flank ult with Ryan. When your ultimate's charged and ready to go, think about where the enemy team is weakest and exploit that point. If they aren't running a strong front shield on the other team, then you are super lucky and you don't need any flank roots or smart play to drop all six of them onto the ground. P.S. Reinhardt is borderline a must pick against an enemy that tries to run this team comp with no main shield. However, if they are running a main tank with a shield, you need to get creative and find an angle that they don't expect to punish them with. Oftentimes, I will communicate with my team, mainly my off tank like Zarya or Diva, and have them aggressively hold or push the main choke while I wait around a corner for the enemy team to bite, then slam them all to the ground. Check out this play where we did this pretty freaking awesomely. Once you've landed your shatter, do not pin into the enemy team right away. Instead, first, throw a fire strike, nailing as many of them as you possibly can. Then, start swinging like crazy with your hammer, once again, nailing as many of them as you possibly can. This is the most damage you can contribute to the fight. Now, as soon as the animation starts, when they're getting up, then you pin. Be sure on your pin that you don't land out of position. However, especially if your team didn't capitalize on your shatters. So many Reinhardts die after landing a shatter because they pinned right into the other team's space, where the other team still had the advantage. Well, there you have it. Five tips on how to play like a baller Reinhardt. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. We're small and trying to grow. As always, thanks for hanging out in the D-pad.